Welcome to question 5 of the 2017 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 5 we have records of the arrival times of trains at a busy station have been kept for a long period. The random variable x represents the number of minutes after the scheduled time that a train arrives at this station. That is, the lateness of the train. Assume that the lateness of one train arriving at this station is independent of the lateness of any other train. The distribution of x is given in the table below. For part a, we're asked to find the value of p. So we know that the sum of all of the probabilities must add up to 1, so therefore we know that 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 plus p must equal 1. Therefore, the value of p is 0 0.2 when we solve that equation. So that is the answer to part A of this question. For part B, we're asked to find the expected value of x or e of x. And we know that e of x is equal to the sum of x times p of x. And that formula is given on your formula sheet, so you can look that up in an exam. So therefore, the expected value of x for this discrete random variable is going to equal, and x times p of x will be negative 1 times 0 0.1 plus 0 times 0 0.4 plus 1 times 0 0.3 plus 2 times p, whose value is 0 0.2. So the expected value of x is equal to negative 0 0.1 plus 0 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 and that is equal to 0 0.6 so that is the answer to part B of this question for part C we're asked to find the variance of X so from the formula sheet we know that the variance of X is equal to the expected value of when X is squared minus the mean squared and the mean was what we just found in part B of this question so therefore, the variance of x is going to equal, and then we square x before multiplying it by its probability to get e of x squared. So we're going to have negative 1 squared times 0 0.1 plus 0 squared times 0 0.4 plus 1 squared times 0 0.3 plus 2 squared times 0 0.2, the value of p. And now the thing that people will always forget in this calculation is to subtract away the mean squared. So that's subtract away 0 0.6 squared. And that 0 0.6 was found in the previous question. So that means our variance of x is equal to negative 1 squared becomes positive 1 times 0 0.1, so that's just 0 0.1. 0 squared times 0 0.4 is just plus 0. 1 squared is 1 times 0 0.3 is just plus 0 0.3. And then 2 squared is 4 times 0 0.2 is going to be add on 0 0.8. And then we still need to subtract away 0 0.6 squared, which as a decimal is 0 0.36. So this can be calculated out now to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.4, plus 0 0.8 is 1.2. And then we subtract away 0 0.36, give, giving 0 0.84 as our final answer. So that is the value of the variance of x, which is what was asked of us in part C of this question. For part D, we have a passenger catches a train at this station on five separate occasions. And we already know that we were treating each occasion as being independent from the instruction in the questions. So for part D, we're asked, what is the probability that a train arrives before the scheduled time on exactly four of these occasions? So a train arriving before the scheduled time is on our probability distribution above, the same as x being negative 0.1, which gives a probability on each occasion of being 0.1. And because each occasion is independent, we can actually see for this, y is going to be distributed binomially with five trials and a probability of success of 0.1. So now that we know that we're dealing with a binomial distribution, we know the probability that x is equal to four, so that is exactly four of these next five occasions, is equal to five choose four 
times the probability of success, which is 0.1, which I'm going to write as a fraction 1 over 10 to the power of 4, times the probability of failure, which is going to be 9 over 10 to the power of one occasion being like that. So now we just need to evaluate this. So 5 choose 4, there is 5 ways that that can happen. Multiplied by 1 over 10 to the power of 4 is the same as 1 over 10,000 multiplied by 9 over 10. And now cancelling this 5 with part of this 10 allows us to calculate our final value which will be on the top line 9 divided by 2 times 10,000 is 20,000. So that is the answer to part D of this question.